Hello, my name is Amar Jyot Singh and I do spouse cases a lot. Uh, I'm traveling in India at present and I see so many spouse cases that uh, I felt compelled to share with you what I see as the possible mistakes by a lot of applicants. Many people apply spouse cases uh, without understanding what is involved in it, what are the criteria the visa officer is looking at, and they get refused. And when they show me the refusal letter, I get a little frustrated because there were so many silly mistakes or there are uh, insufficient explanation to certain problems in your uh, spouse visa application that I, I thought maybe I should share with you. So there are always some weaknesses in spouse applications or what I call as red flags in the application. If I see this, this red flag and I'm tempted to either cancel, either, you know, as looking at the criteria from the visa officer, I'm uh, impelled to deny the application or call them for an interview. So I'll discuss some red uh, red flags with you. And I've, I've written, I made some uh, written notes here in front of my screen. Uh, one of the red flags, one of the problems in the spouse visa application is, uh, so I'm going to assume that the husband is here in India and the wife is in, in Canada. So if the wife got the visa uh, today and the marriage was taken place like within a week or two, that's a big red flag. That shows there's a short gap between the visa and the marriage itself. So that's a big red flag. That's a big no-no. Uh, it has to be explained why. All right. So this is a trigger that the marriage the, is now genuine. It possibly has been done because of going to Canada. The second red flag is after marriage, the husband or ha wife has lived only for a few days or maybe a few weeks, less than a month. That is that is a big no-no. That means the post-marriage cohabitation is very, very little, like few, you know, few weeks. That's not good. That does not show that the husband and wife has a lasting relationship until unless they have known each other before the marriage for many years. So that's that's a possibility. Uh, the number number third red flag that I've posted here is the the courtship. That means the the time when we, you have known each other and the time of the marriage, that means if you just have known each other for the marriage for maybe one week or two weeks or one month, until unless it's a, like arranged marriage, the courtship period, the, the period of knowing each other until the conclusion of the marriage itself, if that is a small, uh, you know, uh, time, like few, uh, maybe few days, maybe less than a month, then that's that sounds fishy. That sounds suspicious and the application will be triggered for an interview. Uh, the fourth one is uh, the communication. You know, once you have known each other, the how much communication do you have? Do you have extensive communication for several years, or do you have communication chat history, Facebook, Skype, and other things only for a limited period of time? Uh, another uh, point here is uh, the communication is if you don't have any photographs. If you have zero photographs, I've, I've, I've met some guys who say, "Oh, we don't take photographs," and say, "Oh, sorry, okay, uh, there's no proof that you met, so no photographs." Uh, or less photographs is also a trigger or, or red flag. Uh, number five, I also I, I also mentioned earlier, if the wife, uh, let, let's say the wife is already in Canada, she comes for marriage and then she does the marriage registration and leaves immediately after one week or 10 days. So it's, it's called a quick departure. That is a big red flag. That means, you know, uh, there's no lasting cohabitation after the marriage. So. I know, you know, sometimes they say, look, you have uh, studies to attend or you miss out, uh, you know, some credits. But, you know, this is marriage we're talking about. If you have no time to live with the husband, how are you, you know, proving a genuineness of intent? That doesn't make sense. Number six is that in your marriage, if you have a marriage ceremony, if nobody came, I mean, there, I saw some photograph, I saw some marriage application where there were hardly one or two people in the, in the marriage ceremony. And I wonder... How come nobody is interested in your marriage? Nobody is there. Nobody knows about this. That, that's a big red flag. Uh, number seven is uh, when some, some people show photographs of marriage where everybody uh, is wearing the same clothes. Everybody in all the events. So let's say engagement ceremony or some other ceremony or, or the marriage and some other later. Uh, I saw some photographs where everybody was wearing the more or less in the same uh, context, same clothes and same, uh, you know, same presentation. Looks like it was... Uh, rehearsed it looks like it was staged it doesn't look like a real so that's a big uh, big red flag uh, number uh, number nine uh, sorry number eight is that the, the the wife after marriage went to canada and she never came back and she you know it's been six months or one year and she never came back to visit the husband that's a big big red flag so you know, 
as a visa officer that shows that you know husband and wife have no time for each other so that's that's uh, that's a little problem uh number number nine which is of course i think i'm sorry this is probably the same thing so no conjugal visits after marriage nobody you know they, they didn't meet each other so that's uh, that's a still a red flag number 10 is uh, if you have uh, no proof of communication if you have no photographs no uh, maybe financial uh, you know sharing of bank account and children's account uh, documentation on the on the on the legal documents if you have no name no showing that's that's on, on the uh, red flag uh, number 11 if the husband in India has no income, or maybe he has, um, uh, maybe he's not established, he has no salary uh, slip or uh, no income, maybe income in coming from agriculture, there's no uh, reliable source of proof of current income. That's That shows a weak establishment to India. They will impose Section 201B. Uh, so that's something that, you know, um, or the bank statement is showing as a large deposit. Uh, there has been no bank, uh, stable, consistent bank history in the past several years but suddenly in the last month showed a big uh, bank deposit that's that sounds like a big big problem uh, agriculture income i've already mentioned there's a problem in the agriculture income to uh, to show so uh, that's that's a problem uh, to chat history uh, there are some in chat history i've, I've seen some problem on the uh, on the way there's a uh, the the names are missing on the chat history so i i, I have a thousand pages of chat but it does not show what is the ID, who's talking, and when did this chat start. That sounds suspicious. It's unreliable uh, for, as a visa officer, to ascertain uh, who's talking, uh, you know, what is the ID of the person who's talking. So those are some of the red flags. I noticed weaknesses in the application after analyzing many spouse visa applications. So that's my little gist and summary. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, you can always welcome to discuss your case. Uh, these are the problems, but of course you have to provide justification or solutions to the to this uh, to these red flags if they call you for interview and only then you'll get the visa. Thank you very much for your time. I'm still in India. I'm traveling, and wherever I go, I only get I get other cases also. But um, suddenly there's a flood of spouse visa applications where people are frustrated. They cannot go and join their wives, and they are looking for me to come and reapply or appeal or maybe you know, offer some suggestions. All right. Thank you very much for your time and take care.